Hello and welcome to this session in which we will discuss permanent differences that deals with the third tax asset and the third tax liability. Now when we say permanent differences, we have to understand we are discussing permanent differences in contrast to what we call temporary differences. So we have temporary differences which I discuss in a prior session and we have permanent differences which I will discuss in this session. So if you don't know what temporary differences are, it will be helpful to understand what temporary differences are in contrast to permanent because temporary differences will reverse permanent differences by nature. They're permanent. They don't reverse. So what are permanent differences? Permanent differences are items, certain items, certain revenues, certain expenses. They are included either. Remember, we have two sets of books because we have to complete our taxes following the IRS rules and financial accounting follow gap. So those permanent differences, they either go into gap, but never in IRS, but they are part of the IRS record, but never in gap. So they don't reverse. They're either they are accounted for for financial accounting, but not for IRS or accounted for for IRS, but not financial accounting. So they are included in gap financial income in gap pre pre-tax financial income, but never in, in the IRS record or in the IRS record, included in the IRS record, but never in gap financial income. This is what permanent, they never reverse and they go to the other side. So permanent differences affect only the period in which they occur. As a result, we have no deferred tax asset or liabilities as a result. So just you need to know what are those permanent differences and how do they affect you in this particular period. So it's easy. You just have to know what they are. I'm going to list them, explain them, show you ex and work an example. Now, it's very important that you understand them because when you take your income tax course, you're going to have to deal with something called Schedule M1. And this is what really what we are discussing. Or if you are learning Schedule M1, it will be easy for you to learn those permanent and temporary temporary differences. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to go over some common examples that appears on the financial statement, but not on the taxes. And they're going to be very easy to follow because I'm going to explain them to you. How would how would you learn them? First of all, municipals and state bond interest revenue. Th those are called tax exempt income. Simply put, if you buy bonds, state bonds, municipal bond, city bond, county bond, not federal government, state or state or muni, not federal. Be careful because that's how they trick you on the exam. And you would be receiving interest income from those bonds. Those interest income, they are exempt. Exempt means they don't go on your taxes. So you go, they go on your financial statements. Obviously, you received income. When you prepare your financial statement, you would include them, but they are not taxable. Now, related to one is interest expenses incurred in obtaining tax exempt interest. So if you had to borrow money to invest in those bonds, you're going to be incurring interest expense. Well, guess what? Your income is not taxable. So that's okay. Then to be fair, also, your expense for that income is not deductible. So guess what? We're not going to tax you on the income. That's fine. We're going to let it go. But bear in mind, the expenses that you incur to obtain those is not is not deductible as well. So it's not taxable. The income is not taxable. The expense to generate that income is not deductible. Life insurance proceeds, which is a form of income carried by the company on key officers or employee. So what happened? Companies, they buy life insurance on their key employees, uh, uh, key officers. In case something happened, the company is compensated in case they lost that key employee or key officer. Sometimes partners, they do that. They buy life insurance on each other. So the income that you receive as a result of life insurance proceeds is not taxable. Also, the premium paid. So to obtain the insurance, you have to pay premium. Basically, you have to buy the insurance. You have to pay a fee. The, the fee that you pay to obtain that insurance, guess what? Also not deductible. So as long as the company is the beneficiary. So what we do is we'll let you get the income for free, but the premium paid cannot be deductible. Basically, three and four, they're related to each other and they should make sense. Also, any fines, 
and expenses resulting from violation of laws. So simply put, the government is saying we are not going to we are not going to uh, reward you. Get, simply reward you means giving you a deduction if you violate the law. If you have to pay a fee, you cannot deduct this for tax purposes. Of course, you can't. Also, when you pay your fe federal income tax, you can you cannot deduct federal income tax on your federal return. So those are items that go into the financial statements, but they don't go on your tax record. Never go on your tax record. The next, uh, on the next thing we're going to look at is the opposite. We're going to see when it goes on your taxes but no on your income statement. But before we proceed, I would like to remind you whether you are an accounting student or a CPA candidate, and most likely you are a student or a CPA candidate, and you're looking for help. This is how you end up on this video. I can help you. I don't replace your CPA review course. I don't replace your accounting course. My resources will help supplement your preparation. How? By providing you resources, lectures, multiple choice, true, false. I can help you do better. I, this is a list, a partial list of my accounting courses. My CPA are aligned with your Becker, Roger, Wiley, Gleam. So you can go back and forth between my material and your CPA review course real easily. I give you access to 1,500 previously released AI CPA questions with detailed solution. If you have not connected with me on LinkedIn, please do so. Take a look at my LinkedIn recommendation. Like this recording, share it with others, connect with me on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, Reddit. And I started a CPA exam group for CPA candidate to hold a discussion among CPA candidate preparing for the exam. Now let's discuss items that are taxable. Yes, they are included and in, not taxable. They are included on your tax record, but not on the financial statement. Well, there's not much couple. We're going to discuss couple. One is called the DRD, the dividend received deduction f f for U.S. corporations. What does that mean? It means U.S. corporation, when they invest in another corporation, they get a deduction, a deduction, basically a deduction, an expense. But that expense is really does not exist. So it's a it's a deduction. Let's call it a deduction because the, te the terminology is deduction. You will get a deduction, but that deduction does not go on your financial statement. So if you look on your financial statement, you don't see a dividend received deduction. This is a tax deduction. Basically, it's a phantom deduction. Also, you don't have to worry about this. Just know it in case it appears on the exam. Percentage depletion of natural resources. So you deplete, like you depreciate an asset, you deplete natural resources. You, if you use the percentage depletion, you can take expenses, which is depletion and excess of your cost. So although you might pay a certain amount of cost, you might be able to get a little bit more. Now to put all these permanent differences and temporary dif permanent and temporary differences together, we'll work an exercise that's going to help us illustrate how this all fits together. So we have this company, Adam Company, reports pre-tax financial income, which is a gap income, 100,000 for 20X1. The following item causes differences between taxable and pre-tax income. The tax rate is 20% for this and future years. And I keep saying future years because we have to understand the rules later on in case future years are different. The tax rate for future years is different than the current year. So that's why I keep mentioning, I keep mentioning this. So here are the differences. We have maker's depreciation, which is sometimes they tell you it's maker's depreciation. Sometimes they call it tax depreciation is greater than book depreciation. Simply put on your tax record, you took more depreciation than for financial accounting. And sometimes it could be the opposite. You have to read those very carefully. Rent reported on the tax return is 15,000 greater than the rent reported on the financial statement. Simply put, you have rental income, $15,000 reported on your income tax return in excess of your financial income revenue. And Adam also paid $23,000 fines for pollution related activities. Bad, bad Adam. Okay. So, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to compute the taxable income because we're not giving taxable income. We're going to start with financial income of 100,000. Now we're going to work backward. Working backward means we're going to take a look at what we are giving and start to work backward. We are told that the depreciation for tax should be 20,000 greater. Simply put, we have to deduct an additional $20,000 from this 100,000 because the depreciation for tax is higher. That's done. For one is done. Rent, excess rent collected. Well, we also have to report an additional $15,000 in rent revenue that's not reported for the financial number because it's not tax, it's not, uh, it's not earned yet as far as financial accounting, but it's taxable. Therefore, we have to add 15000 
and we paid fines of 23,000. Now the fines were deducted from this numbers. The fines were deducted to get to the 100,000, but IRS cannot allow you to to deduct the fine, therefore you have to add it back, add back the 23,000. So all in all, if my math is right, your taxable income, which is the IRS income is 118,000. Now our tax rate is 20%. We're gonna multiply this by 20% and we're gonna come up with our tax bill, which happens to be 23,600. We can start to prepare the journal entry. We credit income taxes payable 23,600. That's income taxes payable. Now we're going to start to compute our deferred tax asset and deferred tax liability, starting with the excess rent. Remember, we already paid, uh, we already included the 15,000 in taxes, right? We included the 15,000 in taxes for this year. Therefore, in future years, we're going to have, we're going to have a deferred tax asset, a deferred tax asset, 15,000. 15,000 times 20% will give us 3,000. Therefore, we're going to book deferred tax asset of 3,000. Now, this is easy because in this example, we're always assuming that the prior balance is zero. So we went from zero to 3,000. It means our deferred tax asset went up 3,000. Now, the excess depreciation here, um, since we took the depreciation now, we cannot take it in the future. It's going to create a deferred tax liability of 20,000 times 20%. 20 that's going to be a deferred tax liability of 40,000. 40,000, we credit deferred tax liability. So the deferred tax liability was zero. And now it is, let me put it here. So the third tax liability was zero and now it went up to 4,000. It's important to see it went up to 4,000 because what matters is the change in the third tax asset and the third tax liability. Okay, that's fine. Now we are left with is the income tax expense. What is income tax expense? What is our income tax expense? Well, we know, so I'm gonna just break this down for you. We know that the current income tax expense is 23,000. So 23,600 is the current. Now, when we increased the third tax liability by 4,000 when we increased by, it happens to be the increase and the same thing as the journal entry of 4,000, that's gonna increase our taxes by 4,000. This is for the deferred portion. So in the future, we have to pay an additional 4,000, but also in the future, we're gonna save 3,000 minus, so 4,000 plus minus 3,000 for the deferred tax. Therefore, if we, Take 23,000 plus 4,000 minus 3,000 income tax expense is 24,600, 24,600. So I'm gonna show you this in a journal entry perspective, a little bit simpler. Not simpler, maybe you will understand it a little bit better. So hopefully we all understand that at the 23,600, this number here is the current tax expense, the current income tax expense. What happens since our deferred tax asset went up by three, Always the corresponding entry to the, to the deferred is the income tax expense. So we have an income tax expense. So if the deferred went up by three, the third tax asset went up by three, your income tax expense went down by three. If your deferred tax liability went up by four, your income tax, since we credited it 4,000, we're gonna debit this, increase this by four. So overall, net of a thousand. So your deferred portion is net of a thousand. So simply put, all in all, your deferred portion is net of a thousand. Okay, net of a thousand. Let me use a different color so you will see it. Net of a thousand. Therefore, one thousand plus plus twenty three thousand six hundred will give us income tax expense of. 24,600. What should you do now? Go to farhatlectures.com, work MCQs, true false. Don't shortchange yourself. Your education is important. Your accountant education is important. You are investing in yourself. You are investing in your career. Take it seriously. It's going to pay dividend down the road. Good luck. Study hard. And of course, stay safe.